Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and today we're going to learn how to balance chemical equations. If you're in a chemistry class, or even in an integrated science, or a general science class, one of the things that you normally learn how to do is balance chemical equations. Now, why do we have to do this? We'll take a look at this chemical equation that we have here. We have some gallium oxide, Ga2O3, and this looks like a decomposition reaction. It breaks down into gallium, Ga, and oxygen gas, O2. Now, if you look at the number of atoms of each element on both sides of the arrow here, we start out with, it looks like we're starting out with two gallium atoms here on the left. We have two GAs, but there's only one GA on the right. Now, there's no subscript, so it means there's only one of them. And likewise, we start out with three oxygen atoms, you know, the O3, and we end up with two oxygen atoms over here. So to the untrained eye, it might make us think that somehow in this reaction, we're destroying one atom of gallium and one atom of oxygen. And we know that that can't happen because the law of conservation of mass says that you can never create or destroy atoms. So we have to balance this out so that we have the same number of galliums on both sides of the arrow. And likewise, we gotta have the same number of oxygens on both sides of the arrow. So that's what balancing equations is all about. And we're gonna do that by putting numbers or these coefficients in front of each of these uh, substances. So let's start with oxygen here. I notice that we have three oxygens on the left and we have only two oxygens on the right. So I'm gonna multiply the two here by three to make it six. I'm gonna multiply the three by two and I do that by putting a two in front of its it's compound there. So three times two is six. The two times three is six. So now I have the same number of oxygens on both sides of the arrow. I have six oxygens on both sides. Now, I have to do the same thing with Ga, the gallium. Now, I had two, but I just multiplied that by two, didn't I? Anytime that I put a coefficient in front of something, I'm multiplying everything that that coefficient is, uh, is in front of by that number. So the two times two is four GAs. I only have one GA over here, so I've got to multiply this one by four to make it balance out, don't I? So now I have four galliums on both sides of the arrow, and I have six oxygens on both sides of the arrow. And this is a balanced equation. And that's what we're trying to get here. We're going to do several examples so that you can see how this works in different uh, occasions, in different examples. So let's try this one here. This looks like a single replacement reaction because we're taking an element and we're adding it to a compound. So one thing that I, I like to tell students to do is if you have a polyatomic ion that remains unchanged, you know how there's an SO4 over here, and then there's an SO4 over here. Treat that like it's its own unit, you know? We have one SO4 unit right here. But here, we have three SO4 units. We know that because there's a little parenthesis and a three after that. So if I have a one versus a three, how can I make those be equal? Well, I want to multiply this one here by three. So I, I have to put a three as a coefficient out in front. So now I have three of those sulfates, those SO4 units on both sides. Well, now I can go on to the next element and I can take my pick, either iron or aluminum. Let's do aluminum next. I have one aluminum right here and I have two aluminums right here. So that means I have to multiply the one on the left by two to make that equal out. So I'm gonna put a, a two right here. So now my aluminums are balanced. Next, let's balance the irons last. So we have how many irons on the left side? Well, we have three, don't we? Because we had one, but now we had to times it by three. So we have three and we only have one on the right. So I have to times this one by three as well. Okay, so now we have a balanced equation. Let's try another example. Let's try one with sulfur 
and sometimes sulfur exists in the S8 form. And if we burn that in oxygen, we can make sulfur dioxide. So this looks like a synthesis reaction. So looks like the oxygens are already balanced. We have two here and we have two here. So let's focus on the sulfurs now. Now, how many sulfurs are on the left? Well, there are eight, you know, S8. And how many are on the right side? Well, only one. So we're going to have to multiply the one on the right side by eight. You know, one times eight is going to get us the same eight that we have over here. So the sulfurs are balanced. Let's do the oxygens next. They were balanced. You know, the oxygens were fine, but we kind of messed them up when we uh, put this, this eight over here. So we have two oxygens on the left like we had before. How many oxygens are on the right side? Well, it's 8 times 2, so 16. Remember, the coefficient multiplies that number by everything that it's in front of. Okay, so we have 16 oxygens. We're going to have to multiply this one by 8 to make you know, 8 times 2, 16 as well. So now we have that balanced equation. Let's try one that's a little bit more complex. Here we have ammonia, NH3 is ammonia, plus copper 2 oxide yields nitrogen and water and copper. So let's uh, start with the hydrogens here. Um, if I ever see an element that, ha that has a 3-2 split, like I have here a 3 and a 2, if you ever see an element that has a 3-2 split in one of these, start with that element. That's just my recommendation. It makes the rest of the, of the question a lot easier if you do it that way. So we'll start with the hydrogens. So we're going to do like we did in the first example, and we're going to bump those both up to 6. So that means I have to multiply this one by 2. So a 2 right there. I have to multiply this one by 3. So now I have 6 hydrogens on both sides. You know, 3 times 2 is 6, and that 3 times 2 is 6 as well. All right, if I look at my nitrogens, I've got n, but I've got two of them, you know, two n's. And on the right side, I also have two n's as well. So my nitrogens are good. Um, how about the uh, coppers? You know, we have one copper here, and we have one copper over here. So that's good. Let's look at the oxygens next. We had one, but we multiplied it by three. So there are three oxygens over here. And there's only one oxygen here. So we're going to have to multiply the copper oxide by 3. So we're going to put a 3 in front of this. And now my oxygens are fine. we got 3 oxygens compared to 3 oxygens. Now, there's something else we just did. We kind of messed up our coppers, didn't we? The coppers were fine, but you know we now have 3 coppers, 3 Cu's. And we only have one over here. So we have to multiply this one by three. So sometimes there's a lot that we have to keep straight in order to balance these equations. But this is a balanced equation now as it stands. If you do the inventory, we can see that we have two nitrogens on both sides, two ends, and two ends right there. We have six hydrogens. You know, the three times two is six, and the two times three is six. So hydrogen is good. We have three coppers right there, and we have three coppers on the right side. And then three oxygens on the left, you know, the one times three is our three, and the same thing over here, one times three gets us three oxygen. So that's good, we've balanced that equation. That one was a little bit tougher, wasn't it? Let's try another one that's a little bit tough as well. Here we have aluminum hydroxide, and this is a decomposition reaction, it turns into uh, aluminum hydroxide, I'm sorry, aluminum oxide, and water, H2O. So we're going to start with, well, what should we start with? Well, I would say let's start with the hydrogens because you might notice that we have another case where it is a 3-2 split here, that we have three hydrogens right here, and then we have two hydrogens. So we'll start with that one. Um, if you're not sure what to do with parentheses, just remember that the number outside the parentheses is multiplied by everything inside the parentheses. So, you know, 
there's understood to be a one here and a one here. So we actually have three hydrogens, okay? Three hydrogens. And over here, we have two hydrogens, okay? So we have that three, two split. So I'm gonna multiply the three by two and the two by three. So now we have six hydrogens on both sides, okay? So the hydrogens are balanced now. Let's look at the uh, aluminum element or the uh, aluminum atoms next. I have, looks like I have two aluminums on the left side. You know, we had one, but we just times it by two. So we got two ALs and we have two ALs on the right side. So that's good. Let's look at our, uh, which one have we not done yet? I, I think it's oxygen, right? So how many oxygens do we have on the left side? That might be kind of a tough calculation. We had uh, one times three, you know, three oxygens, but then we actually multiplied that by two. So we actually have six oxygens on the left side. You know, three times two is six. And how many oxygens do we have on the right side? Well, we have three right here, and we have three more over here. You know, one times three gets us three more. So we actually have three plus three, six oxygens. So guess what? The oxygens are balanced. We have six of them on both sides. Here's another tip. If you ever have an element that's separated by a plus sign, like we have oxygens in two different places here, separated by a plus sign, leave that one for last. Balance that element last. That makes it a lot easier for you, okay? Let's try another example here. Let's try this combustion reaction. For some reason, combustion reactions just seem to be tougher. And you'll see why here in a second. Um, when you're balancing a combustion reaction, I would strongly recommend that you start with the carbons. Do those first. Do the hydrogens next. And balance the oxygens last. So we'll start with the carbons. How many carbons are on the left side here? Well, we have two, don't we? C2. And how many carbons are on the right side? Just one. So we have two versus one. I have to multiply the right one by two, don't I, to have two carbons on both sides. Let's balance the hydrogens next. How many hydrogens are on the left side? We have six, don't we? And how many hydrogens are on the right side? Two. So six versus two, how do we get those to be equal? Well, we have to times this one by three, don't we? Because three times two is six, and that equals out with the other six that we had uh, over on the left side here. Okay, well now we just have the oxygens to balance left. Uh, uh, left. So how many oxygens are over here on the left side? Just two. I'm gonna write that down. How many oxygens are on the right side? This is a little bit tougher. How many oxygens are on the right side? Well, if you said seven, you're correct. Now, how do we get seven there? Well, follow along with me here. We have two oxygens here, and we times that by two out here in front. So that's two times two, four. And here we had a one oxygen, but we multiplied it by three. One times three is three. So four plus three gets us seven. Okay, so we have seven oxygens on the right side, only two on the left. So how do I get them to be equal? What number times two equals seven? Well, it's not a whole number, is it? It's like three and a half. <laughs> so guess what? I'm going to go ahead and put three and a half here. I'm going to put three and a half right here, or seven halves if you prefer. And that's kind of a balanced equation, isn't it? Now, you might be thinking, well, that, that's kind of funny to have a fractional coefficient. We haven't had that before. And you're right. We really shouldn't have a fractional coefficient. You can't have half of a molecule reacting. We have to get these into lowest whole number ratios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and take all these coefficients. There's understood to be a 1 here. We have a 3.5 here, a 2 and a three, and I'm gonna double all of those. I'm gonna just multiply them all by two, and that's gonna get rid of that fractional, that half coefficient. 
So that means that this one here becomes a two, the three and a half becomes a seven, the two becomes a four, and the three becomes a six. So our coefficients are actually two, seven, four, and six. And if you do the arithmetic, do the multiplication and addition here, you'll find that we have the same number of carbon atoms on both sides and hydrogen and oxygen. We have two, or we have four carbons on both sides, you know, four versus four. We have 12 hydrogens, you know, six times two. And over on the right side, we have six times two. And we have 14 oxygens on both sides. If you look at that, we have seven times two. And then we have four times two, which is eight and six times one, which is six. So eight plus six is 14. It adds up. So this is a tough one. That last one is probably the toughest type of example that, that I might give you. Of course, there are some other balances or other equations that are even tougher to balance. And I might let you try your hand at those too on a practice assignment. I hope you enjoyed uh, or at least learned how to balance equations. If you like the video or at least learn something about this, please uh, slam that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get an A in your chemistry class. So join me again on, on my channel in the future where we can learn some more chemistry together.